On this week's Cruise Chat, we're going to be meeting with Stephanie from Celestial Cruises, and we're going to be looking at some of their great itineraries. We are also going to be looking at their brand new ship. I'm super excited to show you guys that. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that share button. Over to the episode. Everybody and welcome to this week's cruise chat. I'm Kathleen Penner, owner of Plenty of Sunshine Travel, and today I'm joined by Stephanie. And as you can see, Stephanie is from Celestial Cruises, and I am really excited to learn more about your cruise line. I think it's phenomenal that you guys do so many great things in Greece and around in that area. And it's neat, you know, when you have a niche and you kind of dig right into to that area because then you're the specialist, right? Um, if anybody, if you are new to the channel and you don't realize, I have playlists. So do go back and look at the other times I've met with Celestial Cruises. Now, I did meet with Eric, but it's totally fine. And I'm actually excited to meet with Stephanie as well on this time. Um, so you'll see a different face, but it, it's going to be some great content there. But make sure you stick around for this one because we've got some really exciting things to talk about. So over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for um, inviting me on the channel. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about Celestial Cruises. Uh, not a lot of people know about this brand, although we have been around for a really long time. Um, Celestial is a Greek-owned and operated cruise line. We've been around in the European market for about 85 years oh under various different names and such, <laughs> but um, branded as Celestial since about 2012. And uh, we're a very unique, like you're saying, niche product. So I'm going to show you a few of the things and hopefully get you guys excited about going on a cruise with Celestial Cruises. So there's a ton of different cruise lines out there and obviously we all go to you know various destinations but there's specific reasons why you choose specific brands that you do and with us the real things that it we're about the destination. We're not so much about the ship as we are talking about where we're sailing to, which is very specific. We do just the Eastern Mediterranean. That is it. We're not trying to be everything to everybody. We're just being very true to um, the company because we are Greek owned and operated. Essentially, it's, it's a Greek company wanting to show you Greece the way that they experience Greece and they're so fortunate to be able to call it home. So it's a very different style of cruising in that way when you're on board. We have medium-sized ship. We're an award-winning product, been around for a really long time. I think the award that I like the best is that we have um, a solo traveler award, meaning if anybody is a solo traveler, um, they tend to really enjoy our pricing on our cruises, as well as the fact that being that smaller ships, they get to know a lot of the other guests and they don't really feel like they're solo. And then we have flexible durations, which I'll show you a little bit about that when we go through um, the itineraries that we offer. So very destination specific. Like I said, not trying to be everything to everybody. We really just do Greece, Turkey, Egypt, Israel, uh, Israel, Cyprus, Montenegro. And we just announced for 2025 that we're adding on Dubrovnik as well. So we are not going everywhere and doing everything, but we want you to be able to see this particular part of the world. Again, the way that, that the Greeks want you to see this particular part of the world. Maximum time in port. That's huge. I'm not going to Europe for sea days. I'm going Europe to be able to spend time in the different ports of call that we're going to. But a part of that is also being there for a later night or even an overnight. In North America, we tend to go to bed earlier, right? We have dinner earlier and we go to bed earlier than they do in Europe. And they tend to be just starting their evening when we're calling it a night. So <laughs> if you don't get that opportunity to experience part of the nightlife or even just the evening life in Europe, you're missing out on so much of their culture. So when a ship sails at six o'clock, um, most of the time it's because they want to get you back on board so they can open the shops and the casino. A lot of our itineraries are staying until, you know, past midnight. So... Mm -hmm. It's not about that. It's really, like I said, the heart of, of the product and the company is to show you this beautiful destination. So longer nights and overnights that we have in the different ports. And it's about the culture, the people, the history. And my personal favorite, of course, is the flavors mm -hmm. that you're going to experience when you're in, um, in Greece specifically. Absolutely. 
So they have this thing in Greece called the Greek Philoxenia, and Philoxenia is basically the heart of being hospitable and welcoming. If you've ever been to Greece, you'll know that the people, they want to take you in, like the, the, the grandmas, they want to take you into their home and feed you. And it's the same thing, no matter whether you're on the ship or ashore. We are Greek owned and operated. And of course, we do have a lot of employees that are Greek, but we have 13 different nationalities. English is our first language on the ship. We don't go through the, the many different languages on the PA system. We have individual meetings for the other languages, but we do try to accommodate everybody as best we can um, because we are an international brand and we do have so many different nationalities that do come and visit with us. But the Greek Philoxenia, again, you're going to get that on the ship as well as ashore with the amazing service. Mm -hmm. So when you're booking a celestial cruise, the first thing is, is that you've got two different price points. And I'll talk about this before we actually talk a little bit more about like where the destination is uh, or, or what the itineraries and such are. But the two different price codes that we have to make it really, really easy for you is we have inclusive or we have enhanced. So when you're getting a quote from, from your agents, you, you yes. go through um, the inclusive right away is the first one. It includes <laughs> your dining. It includes your, your drinks at lunch and dinner, your beer and wine. It also includes an 80 US dollar shore excursion credit it includes your entertainment on board your gratuities and of course the celestial promise that you're going to have an awesome vacation okay yeah. but if you want to you can move up to the enhanced mm -hmm. all of our pricing right now is in us dollars so okay. just something to note there if you're going to upgrade to the enhanced it's 260 us dollars per person on a seven night cruise but what you get with that is 25% discount on your short, uh, your specialty dining. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the premium drink package, which means drinks at whatever time you want. You're going to get an additional $80 shore excursion credit, mm -hmm. and you're going to get one hour of Wi-Fi a day. Right away, you might go, oh, I need more than one hour of Wi-Fi. We are in port so much that it you're rarely on board. So that one hour a day is actually perfect amount of time to be posting any of your pictures, um, you know, making a FaceTime call home if you need to, doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it is actually plenty. And the time rolls over. If you don't use that one hour, that one day, it's going to roll into the next day. So that's fine. But the shore excursion credit is great. Mm -hmm. So these must be utilized prior to the cruise. So you'll actually, um, you know, go in and book them. And then, you know, you have a look at all the different tours. We want to know what tours it is that you would like to go on. This is the reason why we have the credit so that we can make sure to make all the proper arrangements that we've got either, whether it be the right language for you, um, that we make sure that you get the tour that you're wanting to go on. We don't want you going all this way, not to get the tour that you want. So by pre-booking it, mm -hmm. hopefully you'll go through and look at all your tours, but you need to, to pre-book at least to use your 80 or 100 and 60 uh, US dollar credit prior to the cruise. Yeah. If you want to make changes when you get on board, that's fine too. But I love that there's a credit in shore excursions because that's the reason we're going. We need to go and explore these destinations, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to dive in deep because other than that, you're just a tourist and I'd rather be a traveler and just to exactly. learn about the culture and, and enjoy my, my day that I'm out, you know, walking around. And it's such a historic place. You want to learn about it and you learn about it by taking the shore excursions and, and getting the right guide. Exactly. And when you think about it, for that $260 more on a seven, eight cruise, you get mm -hmm. take 80 off of that right now because that's the extra amount that you get for a short excursion credit. Plus, then you've got your drinks at whatever time of day that you want. Mm -hmm. So it is a nice um, feature to move up to the enhanced. Mm -hmm. So we're a very small cruise line. We've got two ships. That's it. There's just the two right now. We've got our Celestial Olympia um, that does our three, four, and five night cruises. And um, she's a bit seasoned for sure. We are actually in the process of upgrading our fleet. And so there should be announcements maybe within the next month or so as to which ship is going to be replacing the Celestial Olympia. But even though I've cruised on the ship, even though she is a bit seasoned in age, in the features and the design and the decor, absolutely beautiful. And definitely the food. Like I was not going hungry on board by any means because the food was outstanding okay. um also the service being outstanding our crew members have been with us upwards of 20 years and throughout covid we also kept um employment for our crew because we didn't want to lose them and if any when we started sailing again we wanted those loyal crew members back with us so um happy crew is happy guests right and and Absolutely. you definitely get that that level of service on board is phenomenal and i've cruised a lot so i can speak from experience on that one yeah. But let me show you our newest ship for the seven night itinerary. I'm going to start it with a quick video. <laughs>
So we are really excited at Celestial. We've got some awesome news um, coming out shortly. Well, we've been talking about it for a while, but our new Celestial journey is going to be sailing with us as of September the 2nd. So we are in the home stretch now. Yeah. And it's a it's a new to us ship. So the ship was originally built in 1994. Um, and the previous owners, pre-COVID, did a $40 million refurbishment. And we are currently doing a $20 million refurbishment to get her up to our standards and whatnot. Um, but the ship, I, I walked on board on my very first day on the job with Celestial. Actually, I walked on board the journey and she's stunning. I didn't even know what they needed to do. They said just some painting and a few things here and there, but the ship is gorgeous. So uh, I love the size. 55,000 tons. It's a really good mid-size ship, um, 1,200 guests, which is perfect. Yeah. You know, not too big, not too small, kind of that really good Goldilocks and the Three Bears sort of mm -hmm. we fit right Absolutely. in the middle. And due to the size, we're still able to hug the coastlines. We're still able to go into some of the ports that big ships just simply are never going to be able to go into. So it's a really nice size ship. And we're what excited. Like it, yeah. Oh, for sure. And we're we're increasing the level of um, luxury that you're experiencing on board with us. In previous, uh, when we were mostly catering to European markets, the Europeans aren't as as um, specific about the ships. Most North Americans, we've we've cruised a lot. We like certain levels of luxury, and with this particular ship, it's going to elevate Celestial into that. Now we're we're priced more like something that would be a contemporary or a ship that would have 3,000 guests on board, but we don't. We have 1,200. So it really does make a big difference. I mean, just looking at the pool deck here, isn't it absolutely beautiful? Like, could you not see yourself sitting there having a drink, enjoying, you know, the time while we're setting sail to our next spot? Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Beautiful. Um, there's there's also an outdoor pool space too, which I would, so there's one that has a, a roof that retracts and one that's open to the space here, which is really uh, quite beautiful. And then, of course, different staterooms. Now, with this new ship, one of the things that really makes a game changer for us as a brand is that we're going from having 10 balcony staterooms to 149. So that's huge. Big difference. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Once, yeah. Once you've been in a balcony, it's really hard to not cruise in a balcony again. And they're really nicely appointed staterooms as well. But of course, if you want to book them with only 149, you're going to want to book that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a beautiful um, penthouse suite and it's our stargazer suite. So you do have a 360 degree view from your balcony out to the stars, which is stunning. Um, it is a nice king size bed in here and then lovely dining area, huge bathroom. The closet is bigger. I could, I could pack every single bit of clothing from home and I still wouldn't fill that closet that they have in there. Goodness. Yeah. And I bet you only have one or two of those on board. So if you want to get on those, you got to reach out really early to me. Info plenty of sunshine travel.com. I can get you into exactly. that gorgeous state room. Yes. Beautiful. You got to book it early because there is only the one. But mm -hmm. with this new ship, something else that just adds to our onboard experience is that we're going to have seven spectacular new restaurants mm -hmm. and we're going to have eight different bars for you to be able to go and experience too. So we haven't put out all the full details on that. It's kind of keeping it under wraps. This stuff is coming um, out as we come closer to that sailing date. But uh, the restaurants look really, really good. Beautiful. And then again, this beautiful pool deck space. I know where I'll be. If there's any time that there is at sea, I would be on that aft pool deck. It kind of feels like your own private yacht. Yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. It'd be beautiful for sail away as well. That would be a nice. It would be. Spot. Yeah. Definitely. But re what really sets us apart, though, is the destinations and the itineraries that we have. So um, we our most popular one is called our idyllic Aegean, and we do it pretty much throughout the entire summer season. But here you're going to have the Santorini sunsets. You're going to have a full day in Mykonos, and you'll also have a full day to explore Milos. So when you look at the actual itinerary, uh, there's no sea days. It is jam packed. Every single day we're going to be in a port of call. So we've got Thessaloniki. We'll go into Kushidasi, Crete. A late sail past midnight, so 12.30 from Santorini, as well as from Mykonos the next day at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, these two ports of call are key. Obviously, it's the most popular ports of call, but most cruise lines from Santorini are setting sail at about 6, 7, or 8 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So when you're at the top of Santorini, the only way to get down is to either walk down that donkey path not not ideal <laughs> um or you can take the vernacular or the the cable car 
Now, mm -hmm. the cable car, there's only six of them, and they only accommodate six people in each car. So when you've got thousands of people, that could potentially take a long time. Our guests are enjoying maybe sitting at a restaurant, one of those beautiful cliff restaurants, having a drink, having some food, well, because they're not sailing until past midnight. So we've got all the time to be able to relax and then make our way over to the cable car to make our way over to the ship. And then same thing you with me. You see all the runners, about... too, looking at their watch. Oh, oh yeah. Their phone going up. And then there's that panic, right? So it's nice not to have that panic of I'm gonna miss the ship, it's gonna go. And you've got time to just enjoy the nightlife and explore. Awesome. Exactly. Same thing with Mykonos. Mykonos is known as one of the highlight evening destinations. They've got beautiful beach resorts throughout the day or beach clubs, but nightlife is really the key thing. And you might think, you know what, I'm not going to go out and go partying it up in Mykonos. Hey, you're on vacation. If the spirit moves you, we're going to stay in port for you to be able to have that experience. Awesome. So I threw in a few pictures um, from Athens. Our cruises either start out in Athens or a port, port called Lavrion, which is just outside of Athens, about, the, about an hour away. But of course, you're going to want to go in a day before so that you can go and experience, check out the um, Acropolis, make your way up there. Also check out the Placa in the evening, which is like food and drinks and some beautiful shopping and everything too. Mm -hmm. Another itinerary is our eclectic Aegean. Now, we only offer this one a couple of times a year because Volos is an area that um, most ships don't go into. To actually go into the uh, Dramatic Meteora, which is the picture you see here, it's about an hour's drive in from where the port is. So most cruise lines don't even go into Volos, but it is a unique experience that you'll only get with Celestial. And it also offers the opportunity to do an overnight in, Ath or in Istanbul on this itinerary. Neat. But if you wanted to, let's say you were starting your vacation in Turkey and you were going to go do um, maybe the, the, what are the hot air balloons in Turkey? The, um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Maybe you're just doing a tour of Turkey and you want to start your cruise there. You can actually, you don't have to start in Athens. You can actually start in Istanbul if you wanted to here. And mm -hmm. you can actually end in Santorini if you wanted to also, which we do have a few guests you need to book this prior to, we need to make arrangements for that, but we do have guests that rather than coming back on that last day, would rather get off and spend a couple of days in Santorini and then fly home from there. So there's a bit more flexibility with our itineraries as opposed to ones that are North American. We have a bit more of that flexibility. Mm. Here's a few pictures I took in Santorini. I was just there this past March. March was a little bit chilly. I'm not going to lie. It was definitely a little bit chilly, but you still um, had, you know, it was great because there weren't as many people. I had a great spot to go get the these iconic photos that everybody goes to get. So um, I'm not sure if you can see the one. My face is in the way of the picture of the one in the background where me and my colleagues are sitting and having, we're sitting and having a drink and you can see our ship in the background there. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that's neat. And like, like you said, you know, you're going in those shoulder seasons. So you just don't have all this wall to wall tourists, you feel like you've got the place to yourself, and you can just enjoy it. Also, the weather is really good. Like it's it's um light layers essentially is what you're. It's like a fall season or spring season for us. So make sure that you're wearing light layers. But you know, in the sun, it was beautiful, and it did rain one of the days, and we're like, okay, so we went in and had a coffee, and then we went back out and explored after it was done. Um, our second most popular itinerary is this one. It's our three continent. Now we only offer it at the beginning or the end of the season because when you're going into places like Egypt and Israel, it can be way too hot in the summer and our guests have asked for more on the shoulder season. I'm excited. I get to do this experience in November, but this is the only itinerary that we have a sea day. We don't have any other sea days on any other itinerary. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little bit of time to get to Port Said to go into Cairo. So that's why we have the sea day. And these are two very long days. So from where we dock in Port Said, it is three hours into Cairo and three hours back. Of course, you're going to have, you know, the scenic drive in and everything, but you do have um, plenty of time to see the pyramids of Giza, to see the Sphinx, and to be able to get that photo that everybody wants to get of themselves on a camel. <laughs> Amazing. Um, wow. the, That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. I'll I'll get my photo on there. I'm sure I'll I'll <laughs> I'll brave it and get up and do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then in Ashdod, the next day, you can do Bethlehem and Jerusalem. You can go and do um, a tour into the Dead Sea. There's a few other tours that a uh, tour into Tel Aviv. There's quite a few different options. Uh, the only problem is, is that now you can only choose one because we're only in there for the day. So maybe you'll have to come back on a back to back cruise or something. Um, we also do Limassol, Rhodes, Kushadasi, and then this cruise ends back in Athens. Okay. Yeah. Now, you might not think, oh, I'm going to go to Europe. I don't, I'm not going to go and do a short cruise. But if you're going and doing, let's say, a European vacation and you want to add a cruise component, doing a three or four night with us is the best way to maximize your time. It's also way more comfortable than doing it by ferries in Greece. Mm -hmm. So on these three and four night itineraries, they are jam packed. So these are the ones that dock out of the Port of Lavrion, which is an hour 10 from Athens, 35 minutes from the um, Athens airport. But here on the three night, we leave it one o'clock in the afternoon we get into Mykonos that day at six o'clock and then we're there, there till 11 then we have the next morning in Kushadasi which gives you plenty of time to go in and experience Ephesus we sail in the afternoon and go into Patmos which if you're not familiar with Patmos that's okay because it's not a, a, a much visited destination except that if you um, know much about Paul the Apostle this is where he um, set up a monastery and also did a lot of his sermons in this really 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 beautiful grotto. Uh, it is a unique experience. I've had the op opportunity to, to check that out. And it is such a beautiful little um, island that not a lot of people visit. Mm -hmm. Then we go into Crete, and then we have Santorini later that day as well, and then back in Labrion. So you look at this on a three-night cruise, you're seeing five ports of call. It is busy. Uh, it's not a relaxing cruise. It is a go-go-go cruise, but you're going to be able to see everything. And then on the four-night, very similar, except that we sail at 11 o'clock in the morning. So you've got an extra two hours in Mykonos, perfect amount of time to check out the sites, to be able to see the sunset, which is such a key part of going there too. Kushidasi, Patmos, Rhodes, and then to Santorini. So jam-packed itineraries, but you will see a lot in that short amount of time. Yeah. These are a few pictures I took when I was in Mykonos. It was great because, again, I was there in March, so there weren't a lot of people. There's nobody in my photos. Lots of cats, though. There's lots of cats absolutely <laughs> everywhere. But, I mean, Mykonos is definitely one of my favorite. Um, but if I had to pick a second favorite, I'm moving over to Kushidasi. I've been there a couple of times, and it is such a beautiful, unique city. When you pull into port, you see their version of the Hollywood sign with this big Kushidasi mm -hmm. right there. And then you get to go and experience one of the most beautiful places in the world which is going to Ephesus now um I've been a couple of times I've been really fortunate to travel there a few times and every time it's a different experience because every time you remember something different or you, you check out something different um and there's a few different tours you can do you can do just the old city of Ephesus you can also add on Mary's house which is the opportunity to see where Mary once was you uh, or you get to do the terrace houses which I'll show you a photo of in a sec but you're going to walk the old path that Cleopatra once walked you're going to see this beautiful old library here you're going to learn about the first ever toilets which I'll leave that for you to experience when you go in and check it out um but it is such a, a unique thing and only part of it has been excavated so far like this is the the terrace houses and these are only five these are like the original row homes and you learn about how they started to bring in water and electric and heat into these row homes back in the day and when you're done the tour here and you come out at the top you look over to the left and there's just all these beautiful rolling fields and there are hundreds more of these terrace houses still yet to be excavated underneath those rolling fields so what we're seeing is literally just scratching the surface but it is incredible mm -hmm. to walk through you you feel like you just step back in time and yeah it's unique and I would exp I would tell anybody that that is one of the most unique places that I have experienced and I've seen quite a few different mm -hmm. uh different places in the world I, now, after, I, mean, I love history and I love architecture mm -hmm. so that's that's like that's perfect for me right there because you've got all the history and you've got all you know how they did things at, at that time and why they set mm -hmm. things the way they did and that would just I mean that would be a highlight for me Oh, I'm sure you would love it. I will definitely go back the next time I'm in Ephesus and um, next time I'll do Mary's house because that's the one I haven't done as of yet. So that'll that's next on my list. Um, when you're done that, you go to a carpet making um, factory. So this is a government funded location. And I believe every single cruise line goes here. I'll be perfectly honest with you. But the reason why we everybody goes here is because unfortunately, the art of carpet making in Turkey is a bit of a lost art, but it is something that they're so well known for the Turkish rugs, right? Mm 
Um, so what this this location does is they actually bring in ladies from uh, the neighboring villages and they're on a two year apprenticeship where they are teaching them how to make all of these these carpets, these rugs. And then when they're done and they go home, they send them home with all of the equipment. So now they have a sustainable business and hopefully they also teach their children about it and that it will be something that is carried on because they don't want this to be, you know, a dying art. Once you see how intricate um, the, the weaving and everything is here and you, you see how the ladies do it, then the gentlemen come out and they literally roll out the red carpet. They start bringing out carpet after carpet and you get to feel the different textures and the different structure of it all. And it is so cool to see. It's also really beautiful to see how proud how proud they are of this these beautiful pieces of art because they really are pieces of art and in themselves oh yeah I would put it on the wall if I had one I'd be like you're not stepping on that it's going on the wall right. yeah I wonder if they yeah, should back you know to, to the North America because that's something I can see a lot of people wanting to purchase because they're just gorgeous my goodness they're beautiful they definitely do ship yeah. them back. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on how much you spend, well, uh, sometimes it's free, sometimes not so much, but they definitely do ship them mm -hmm. back for you. Yeah, that's not a problem. It'd be a lot to carry in your carry-on. It certainly would, yes. Um, we're really excited actually about a Christmas New Year's cruise. I was looking at this itinerary and I'm contemplating myself even thinking about going on it because this is a great itinerary to see literally everything all at once. So if you haven't booked anything yet for this year's Christmas and New Year's, now is definitely a really good time to do it. We have an awesome 19 night itinerary that starts on December the 16th. So listen to this. Athens, Kushadasi, Izmir, Turkey, Crete. You're going to do um, Italia, Turkey, Limassol, Cyprus, Alexandria, Egypt for an overnight. Overnight in Haifa, Israel. Then we have a day at sea. Then we are back in Athens. So you do have time. You could split this into an 11 night and an eight night if you wanted to, or do it all at once. Yeah. But you have time to go out and explore Athens again. Then mm -hmm. we've got Crete, Rhodes, Kushadasi, Istanbul for an overnight, a day at sea, Volos, and then back to Athens. It is literally everything that you would want in a um, Eastern Mediterranean cruise all at once. So mm -hmm. You know, if you've got the time, it's a great time to go uh, to go and do that one. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're if you're going to make a booking, um, what you want to do, obviously, is reach out to Kathleen. She's going to be able to get that all sorted out for you and mm -hmm. uh, and get you booked. I forgot. Our heavenly Adriatic itinerary just got announced. Pricing isn't going to be out for another couple of weeks. So this is a bit of a heads up. If you're thinking 2025, the heavenly Adriatic is a perfect one to go on. So it's going to be, I, I've not even heard of some of these islands before, but we're going to go from Athens to um, Kefalonia, Greece, overnight in Dubrovnik. That's a new a destination for us. Oh. We'll go to Kortur, Corfu, um, Catacolon, and Santorini, as well as Athens. Oh. So for 2025, April um, 26, and then in May of 2025, May the 3rd, 10th, and the 17th. Mm -hmm. So only a few to choose from. And again, the ship only holds 1,200 guests. So it's one of those ones that book it sooner rather than later and make mm -hmm. sure that, uh, you know, that you get on that, that itinerary that you want. Wow. Absolutely. That's beautiful. And like, the, look, that's kind of more of a shoulder season, right? It's not the busy summer season. So you really get to immerse yourself. That's a great itinerary. Weather is much more comfortable at that time. I'll be perfectly honest with you. In the heat of summer, Greece is really, really hot. So if you're going on the shoulder season, that's my you know personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if the timing is only for summer for you, you 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 want to experience that part of the world because it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I'm a little so, bit um, adverse, so I think the shoulder season mm -hmm. is perfect to me. <laughs> so. Perfect, perfect. So yeah, so um, Christine, anything you know, we, we do book out. Up until now, 2025, the itineraries or the pricing will be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, our 2024 season is open for anybody that's, you know, wanting to, to go on. Now is a really good time to book it because we have moved it over to the Celestial Journey. So you yeah. will be on that more elevated, uh, elevated ship with us. Yes, beautiful. Wow. That was incredible. That was a lot of information. Wow. That's great. Thank you so much for putting that all together. I greatly appreciate it. I know it's a lot of work and I appreciate you taking the time for all of us. Uh, to do that. So thank you again. And uh, I hope everybody has a great week and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. Guys, thank you so much for watching this week's episode. It was really, really nice to, to meet with Stephanie. I love meeting with new cruises. Um, 
I've met with Celestial probably about three or four times, so it's not as common as some of the other ones, and I just really enjoyed meeting with her. It was really nice to see some of the itineraries to how they stay so long. Uh, it's just incredible. I love exploring the areas that I'm visiting. I mean, that's what I'm there for. And I love the idea that they're there sometimes till one in the morning or even later when all the other ships have gone, you basically have the place to yourself, which is a great way to cruise. So thank you so much for watching. Next week, I'm meeting with Cindy with Norwegian Cruise Line. And we're going to be looking at some of their great itineraries as well. And if you enjoyed this episode or you're listening to this on our Cruising the Waves podcast, I thank you so much for that. Make sure you subscribe, but more importantly, make sure you reach out to me to book you. I would love to be able to book you on your cruises, on your vacations. I am your cruise expert and I, I am all things cruising. So thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, info at plentyofsunshinetravel.com. And I will see you guys next week or on board. Take care. Bye for now.